What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with another video in my Switching to OS X series. This video is going to cover gestures within OS X and how they can increase your productivity when you use them properly. Now whether you realize it or not, Apple is including some kind of a touch device in every single Mac that you buy. Whether it's a MacBook Pro with a trackpad or a desktop like the Mac Mini or even the Mac Pro, you actually even get the option between an external trackpad and a Magic Mouse. So Apple really is pushing their touch technology and I think for a good reason because it's part of the future, at least a big part of the future in my mind. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my favorite uses for gestures and the first one I'm going to start off with is multitasking. Now OS X gives you a lot of multitasking options, at least assuming that you're running Mountain Lion. Lion and Snow Leopard are pretty similar, but I would definitely recommend updating the Mountain Lion whether you're on a legitimate Mac or a Hackintosh. Mountain Lion is just the most stable, it has the most multi-touch features, which can definitely come in handy for you. So the first gesture I'm going to be showing you guys takes place with these guys right here, these three fingers, and on the trackpad I'm going to push them up. Now as you can see that enters what we call mission control, and here is basically as Apple describes it, a bird's eye view of everything you have running on your system. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll bring up some windows here, for example, uh, I have iTunes, TweetBot, I have a Safari window. Now this is all pretty cluttered. Now if I want to change to that iTunes window all the way in the back, rather than having to you know move windows out of the way like this, actually what you can do is do that three finger swipe upwards, and now I get a bird's eye view of all of these windows right here. Now if you kind of want to get just a closer look at it, you can actually hover over it, and as you can see it gives it that blue outline. You can actually hit the space bar and that will zoom it up for you and you can actually read the text. For example, if it's like a Word document or a text edit document, you'll actually be able to read what that is if you have multiple of the same window open from the same application. So as you can see, I can do that for TweetBot, iTunes, Safari. I'll actually go ahead and I'll switch to iTunes. I'll come back, switch to Safari. Now, to show you guys kind of what I mean by uh, my previous statement, I'll go ahead and open up a couple more uh, Safari windows. They're actually coming up here on my other display. So once I do that and I swipe upwards, as you can see, Mission Control actually groups them. And you know, this is kind of a pain to see what window is what. So if I hit the space bar on this one, I can zoom in on that. If I hit the space bar on this one, I can zoom in on that, etc., etc. So it's very easy to see what window is what. Mission Control can also be accessed from the Magic Mouse. It is a little different though. Three fingers is really hard to jam on this little surface. So what you do here is you do two fingers and instead of swiping, you actually just tap the mouse twice and you'll actually enter that same menu. And that'll bring up iTunes, TweetBot, etc, etc. So Mission Control is definitely one of my favorite things within Mountain Lion. And Mission Control actually goes a step further than that. So once we enter Mission Control, we can actually set up new desktops. As you can see up here, I have Desktop 2. All I have to do is come up to the upper right here. You don't see another one like kind of come out of there. Go ahead and click that and you've created a new desktop. Now another three finger gesture or two finger, once again I'll get to that in just a second, but sticking to the trackpad here, we have the three finger gesture we can swipe instead of up, we can swipe left and right. And that will actually swipe us between these desktops. So if I go all the way to my left space, I do have dashboard loaded up here. Now if I go left, I go to my uh, the one I was just at, you know, my main space, I can keep going keep going and I haven't created any more but it, the option is there. I think you can actually have up to 10 different spaces. Within. So switching between these spaces on the Magic Mouse is also very easy. Instead of once again, instead of that uh, three fingers, we actually just use two and we actually do swipe across the surface of the mouse just like this. And as, as you can see, we actually do switch spaces. So this is very convenient if you have the Magic Mouse, you never even have to take your hands off of the mouse and you can switch spaces. This is definitely one of my favorite features of the Magic Mouse. Uh, most mice, they will not let you do that. A lot of mice have been different buttons on the side and things like that, which I believe you can configure within OS X, but this is just a very cool way, very appealing to the eye, and it, it just it kind of feels like you're actually pushing that window out of the way. So I definitely like the Magic Mouse, and that's probably my favorite gesture with the Magic Mouse is switching spaces. Now moving back to the trackpad here, we have another feature called Launchpad. This is another gesture, but instead of three fingers, we have four fingers. And basically what Launchpad is, is a way to launch all your applications with just one click. It's a very iOS-like feature that personally I don't use much, but a lot of you might, and it is a pretty convenient way to launch applications. So what you're going to want to do for that is, like I said, this is a four-finger gesture. Now this is not, you know, minus the thumb. I would call this gesture minus the pinky. So you're going to be using your thumb and then the preceding three fingers. So you can go ahead and leave this guy hanging for now. And what you want to do for Launchpad is take him from the outside and pinch inwards. As you can see, that brings up Launchpad, and just as you would expect, like I said, it's very iOS-like, but you can simply page through your applications by using two fingers right here. 
page through, page through, page through, etc., etc. And when you want to launch an application, well, you click it. Really could not get much more simple than that. Uh, and on the uh, Magic Mouse, there's actually no way to do that by default. I believe you can configure that within OS X, but like I said, I don't use it, so I've never found a reason to. But if I, if I wanted to do that, then it's always right here on the trackpad. It's simply that forefinger, once again, excluding the pinky, pinch inwards, and here's Launchpad. Now you can also clear your desktop, and really this doesn't serve too much purpose. It's kind of just, you know, a fun thing. But maybe, for example, we'll go ahead and throw a window over here, and you want to see if you have a file on your desktop. Now, as you can see, when I moved that, I actually, you know, covered this up. Now, if I want to see it without having to minimize any windows, it's basically the same thing as Launchpad. It's four fingers, but instead of pinching inwards, you start at the center and pinch outwards. And that'll clear your desktop of any windows. It's very easy to see what applications or drives or, you know, files I have on the desktop here. So once again, out, if I want to bring them back, just pinch back in. Very easy to do. And once again, you cannot do that out, out of the box with the Magic Mouse. Now focusing a little bit more on the trackpad here, this is where it's nice to have a trackpad over the mouse. Say for example, we're going to go ahead and browse in Safari. Go ahead and uh, minimize these. Now this text, you know, um, my eyes are getting kind of old, and maybe this isn't big enough. I can actually take this and zoom into the Safari web page, much like on iOS. This is very, very convenient. You can actually even double tap, like much like on an iOS device, and it'll smart zoom it once again. And you know, scrolling is very smooth. I can page around side to side, up and down, pretty much anything you want to do. Like I said, very, very iOS-like. Works just the way you'd think, just how Apple would want it to. Now you can also do this for images. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use that three fingers, go ahead and switch spaces, and now I'll go ahead and I have a screenshot of my desktop right of my wallpaper here. And if I want to zoom in on this, I can also do that within images. So once again, take the two fingers, pinch in, pinch out, in and out, etc., etc. I can also rotate the image by, you know, just just think of it as, you know, the image is right here. And if you want to rotate it, you would take two fingers and do something like that. And as you can see, it rotates on the screen. It actually works pretty nice. This is very convenient when working with images in Photoshop, uh, things like that. This is, you know, kind of app specific. Maybe within Logic, you can zoom into your audio clips, things like that. Within Photoshop or even just something like Preview, very convenient to be able to zoom in like this. So those are the main gestures that I use on a daily basis and ones that I think will help you guys out the most that are brand new to OS X, whether you have a real Mac or a Hackintosh. But right before I end this video, I want to take you guys through the settings. So I'll, I'll go ahead and clear some of these windows out here. And I'll go ahead and, like I said, go into System Preferences here. And you can actually configure these things. So on the on the mouse here, we'll go into the mouse settings. Uh, scroll direction, natural. As most of you guys probably know, they kind of reverse the scrolling in within Mountain Lion. Actually, I think it started within Lion. Uh, it just kind of makes sense for the touch world. Now, if you have like a Windows system, you're going to be totally flipped for a loop, and you can turn this off if you'd like. But personally, I think it's just better because you think of it as if you want to, like, if you're on like a touch device and you want to scroll down, really you move your fingers up because you're taking what's on the bottom and putting it at the top so you can reveal more of what's on the bottom. So that's how OS X uh, works from Lion on. I think it makes sense. It does take a day or two to get used to, but I think it is the way to go. I think it does make sense. And it's just kind of, you know, with inertia, with motion, they do it for that instead of, you know, down is down and up is up. They do it as if you're moving things physically. But as you can see here, we have some options where we can um, double tap with one finger the smart zoom. We can turn that on or off. Uh, more gestures up here is where you guys are probably going to want to go. Swipe between pages. Now, as within Safari, I actually forgot to show you guys that one. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll start off on the Apple page and we'll load up a YouTube page. Now, if I want to go back to the previous page on the Magic Mouse, I can actually just take one finger and we can uh, swipe back like that. We can also do the same thing to go forward, just the opposite direction. So this is a preference right here using Mission Control to get back to System Preferences. You can already see how useful that is. I can actually change this. I can make it uh, swipe left, right with two fingers or swipe with one or two fingers. So I can have one, the other, or both. Really, it's up to you. So here's the swiping between the full screen apps. This one you actually cannot configure. It's either on or it's off. And that's, you know, two fingers like that. And the Mission Control, once again, you cannot actually change this, but you can enable or disable it. So if I uncheck that, if I double tap this, then I will not go into Mission Control. I think you'd probably want to do that if you find yourself hitting that by accident, but that's never happened to me. I actually love the double tap, the Mission Control. I use it on a daily basis, so I will definitely leave that enabled. 
So getting back to the uh, other options here, we're going to the trackpad options. We'll have some more controls here. Tap with one finger. This is a tap to click. The trackpad, the external one, actually has a physical click. Actually, even the MacBook one has a physical click. And some people like it where you don't have to actually hear that click, where you can actually just tap it and it'll click. I find myself accidentally clicking everything all the time when that's enabled. So I actually disable that all the time. And I believe it actually comes by default disabled. But you can enable that if you'd like. Now the secondary click, which I actually forgot to show you guys that too, if you want to right click on any Mac, and this is from the days back to you know, the white MacBooks and things like that, if you actually, on the white MacBooks, the really old ones, which I'm sure none of you guys have, but if you do, you hold two fingers on the trackpad and then you click the physical button and that would be a right click. But nowadays that we have all this awesome gesture technology, all you have to do is click the trackpad down with two fingers and that's a right click. And the same thing can actually be said for the magic mouse. A lot of people may look at this and say, where the heck is my right click? Where the heck is my scrolling? Really, it all just depends where you touch on the mouse. On the, on the magic mouse, if you click down with your finger on the left side of the mouse, it's a left click. If you click down with your finger on the right side of the mouse, it's a right click. A lot of people really overthink that, but really, it's pretty darn simple. But we'll go ahead and we'll get back to these preferences here. So uh, back to that secondary click, you can change this. You can make it click in the bottom right corner, bottom left corner, et cetera, et cetera. But I really like to be able to click anywhere as long as I have two fingers. That's That has proved to work for me very well. So I'm not gonna take you guys through all these settings, but you guys get the idea. Go ahead and mess around with the settings. Uh, really get familiar with gestures because they really, really help you within OS X. Uh, makes things getting done that much fun, that much easier. And honestly, I don't think I could make the move back to Windows, gestures being a huge reason because ever since I've started using OS X, I've really gotten used to the gestures and I found them to be something that I just can't go live without anymore. They've really made their way into my everyday computing experience and I really don't want to let them go. So Windows, they maybe have some gesture mice and things, but they're nowhere near as nice as what Apple offers. The drivers just aren't up to par. The hardware isn't up to par. I could go on and on here, but if you really want an OS with a, a ton of gesture support and you know gestures done as good as they can possibly get, then I would definitely choose OS X. But this video, I hope it helped you guys. This is you know for you people that are just starting to use OS X. You just made the switch, just built a Hackintosh, you maybe picked up a trackpad or a Magic Mouse. I hope this video helped you guys sort out the gestures. And uh, well, I get a lot of people asking me which I prefer, a Magic Mouse or a Magic Trackpad. I definitely have to say, for an everyday basis, an everyday device, definitely the Magic Mouse. The trackpad is kind of cumbersome to use full time as a, a mouse, you know, 100% of the time. But this is definitely better for some key tasks. This is really nice for web browsing, pinching and zooming. I can, you know, flick the page up and down. I can switch between spaces really nice and easily. Whereas the Magic Mouse, um, I, you can't really zoom in. I mean, all they have is the, is the smart zoom. So being able to pinch and zoom the web pages is really nice. Working with Photoshop, um, this is a lot more precise, but then again, I can use this to zoom in. I don't have to you know, click a little magnifying glass or anything like that. So this just makes life really easy working with Photoshop or you know, within Logic, you can actually resize your audio tracks, things like that. But uh, for general everyday use, I would definitely recommend the mouse. But having both is the ultimate experience. Like I said, some things are better for some tasks while others are better for other tasks. So whether you wanna have you know, a real mouse or combined with this and this, that's the fun of it. You can really pick anything you'd like. But I think right here, at least for me, is the ultimate workflow. I can have the best of both worlds here. So like I said, I hope this video helped you guys. I really don't wanna ramble on too much longer. Go have some fun with the gestures. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out roachtechnology.com and at roachtechnology on Twitter. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.